Isochronous, Isochronous. Isochronous means the same time, or the same time difference. Do you think you're unique? You don't think you sound like anyone I'll else, I suppose. I'll to Jim Hall, so if any of you cats are out there, go check him out. He's really good. <laughs> you, you are you, not true. Jim Hall. He's one of my influences, okay? Okay, okay, okay. But, but, you might be <clears throat> Johnny Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really original. The, the yeah. originality doesn't exist, man. It's just us trying to reinterpret the sound in our head out onto the instruments. That's really what it is. And trying to yeah. take like an original process about these things. And we, we believe that we have quite a diverse range of influences. Which range from like yeah. funk to classical, to classical yeah. diverse fusion, fusion jazz yeah. and, Electronic and a collective well. love of like rock music, the angelic kind of, it's beautiful but it's fairy. Um. The concept for our album is, is sort of this link between <clears throat> man versus machine to put it very, very simply. Okay, the, the original idea was like, um, basically that no matter where you are, you are burdened by time. So it's kind of that duality that you, you can't escape time, but there are certain ways to escape it. You know, uh, that's the album's concept at least be, behind the word isochronous because the album is self-titled. You don't see your instruments as machines, do you? No, we see us as the machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just tools to express whatever feeling or information you want to communicate. I started playing piano because my mom traded a horse for one. Then. I kind of grew up having the piano and always having music and always having the entertainment of pressing down keys and hearing sounds. I, I switched on um, to playing bass guitar. Not sure why, but it rocks. And then I played with him and he introduced me to him and to him. And then we all decided we are going to do something. Bass guitar, and I do baking buttons. <laughs> baking? <laughs> wat ons niet eens kan explain met voor mekaar in conversation nie. Mainly music, maar in a music room gebeur daar klomp ander goed as wat nie so musical is nie. Facial expressions and body language wat jy experience tussen members. Daai grote ding wat jy in al hierdie fucking liggies kan sien, om daai grote ding te kan kanker, moet jy een manier van communicatie kry. Dit gaan eventually alles oor gee. Gee wat jy verstaan, gee wat jy voel. Is Frank. Music versus lyrics. Uh, for me personally, the lyrics, because uh, I'm singing them, it, like it's got a big hold on me, and the music's also like, I think it's probably for me it's probably a 50 50. Yeah, it's well, about writing it me. as a package so that yeah. you can't really decide which one is better. Yeah, we don't perceive vocals as vocals in, in the, the commercial sense. It's, it's vocal is an instrument completely, yeah. completely and utterly, you know. And yeah. you'll notice in some of our mixes we do tend to put the vocals back. The lyrics are driven by the music itself. So the music tells us what to write in a sense, you know. <laughs>
that's the harmonic minor, which is the major scale for the flat and flat C. And welcome to the isochronous instructional video. <laughs> Just play that scale and you sort it. <laughs> Richard and I play the guitar and I sing. <laughs> <laughs> I started music, I went to my dad's room and I saw an electric guitar and I was like, damn, this is cool. Then from there I just loved music. Clearly you're in both Kid of Doom and Isochronous, right? Oh. Now clearly these are two conflicting artistic sort of views. views. No, Do you feel like you're jeopardizing artistic integrity by being with Kid of Doom, firstly? Secondly, if you don't, do you feel like you're just doing it because you'd like to make a buck? And finally, in terms of juggling between the two bands, do you feel that Isochronous has a far more sort of humble and honest goal than Kid of Doom does? Okay, well firstly, I'm schizophrenic. Okay. And Kid of Doom doesn't make fucking any money. So oh, that answers that question. <laughs> and there's two different parts of me, bro. Hi, I'm Marco. I play drums for ice hockey. <laughs> I, I actually went to a friend's house and uh, played on a drum kit. It was a lot of fun, whatever, and um, then I just nagged my dad for a drum kit for quite a while. Got a drum kit and I just couldn't stop playing. That's why I left school, I left everything else. The government owns 97% of you, the other 3% is, is creativity. And what we're doing, by doing things like interviews, by putting ourselves on television, by exploiting ourselves constantly, you know, in any form, is, is we're selling that 3% as well. To me, spirituality is the creative center, you know. I'm trying to find a creative center and that, that purity that was there once, you know. But it's kind of hard to do that when most of the stuff you're listening to has lost touch with that. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? When you ask me, like, what's the difference between being a commercial band and not, there is no difference. That's essentially what I'm trying to say. The difference is some bands are more honest about their feelings and others aren't. in our place to speak about you. Yeah. We're not scientists. Please yeah. recycle. Please recycle a new soldier. I'm Alex and I play keyboards. Twinkle twinkle. I started playing drums at school and I thought this was really, really cool and I also begged my parents for a drum set. I played drums for like six, seven years. I started learning to play keyboard when I joined the band. I like cooking, it's pretty interesting. I like golf, I like sports, I like reading, I like TV, I like jokes, I like showers, definitely boobs. <laughs> boobs should have been first. <laughs> So that's how soccer is. <laughs>